So today is Trinity Sunday, and this Trinity idea is, it's a mystery, because we do indeed believe that we've got only one God, but we know that God in three ways. We only have one God, but we know that God as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, there's lots of names that we have for God, and each of those names tell us something about God. There's, of course, God, and there's Lord, and we, we've been studying in Exodus that God told us his name is I Am, or Yahweh. But maybe the best of the names is the one for today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because in that name, we learn so many different things about God. There is God who is the creator of all that is. And then there's Jesus who came to earth and lived among us, died on the cross to forgive our sins and rose from the grave to give us eternal life. And then he rose into heaven, and now, now God is still around. And when God's around, you can bet that it's the Holy Spirit. And of course, so God is in all, God for us in all of those ways. And God has been there from the very beginning. And God is here now, and God always will be here. So God is God of all time for us. There's all kinds of other metaphors that we can use. But ultimately, when we say that God is God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, we say that God is the God who has been here for us and is here with us and who will always be our God. That whenever we have needed God to be God for us, God has been there, and God always will be there. I can't explain how God can be one in three, but I can tell you that in that mystery is the truth, that God is our God in every way that we have ever needed God to be. Amen. Even though you are a king. 
First reading for today is taken from the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter. In the Bible, wisdom is portrayed in terms sometimes human, sometimes divine. Often, wisdom is personified as feminine. In this passage, woman wisdom is depicted not only as the first creation of God, but also as God's helper, rejoicing in God's creation, especially in human beings. The lesson reads, does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, to you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was his daily delight. Rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is taken from Psalm 8. We will read it responsively as it's printed in your bulletin. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set on their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. 
You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading for today is taken from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. Paul describes the life of faith with reference to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Even now, we have peace with God through Jesus, and our hope for the future is grounded in the love of God that we experience through Christ's Holy Spirit. The lesson reads, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus' ongoing presence with the disciples will be made known through the coming Spirit who will guide them and communicate to them Jesus' will and glory. The lesson begins. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. Dee, from the time she was a very little girl, struggled to find a loving and caring God. She grew up in one of those traditions that emphasized that God was righteous. And our job was to make ourselves righteous too, to make ourselves acceptable and and worthy of God's grace and God's love. But of course, D, D didn't fit that very well. She was, from the time she was just a little girl, she was filled with a reckless and life-affirming spirit. And so even though she was told, oh, oh, don't do those wild things. The wilder they were, the more fun they sounded to her. And so when others thought that maybe she shouldn't be quite so outspoken or so willing to do the things that she thought made sense and would be good ideas, she was told that, oh, those things were the very things that would keep her away from God. And so she did. She struggled to believe that God truly loved her, that God really, really thought that much of her. And so mo much of her adult life was spent, spent trying to earn God's favor and God's acceptance, to earn God's love. 
Indeed, God was more of an enemy to her than a friend. God was always watching and always judging, and she knew that she was always coming up short. She surely respected God, and she really feared God. But loving God, that was more difficult. Indeed, she struggled with this almost her whole life. She struggled with it until, until her grandson Jacob came to stay with them. One afternoon, little Jacob found his mother having had an overdose in the living room. And the man that was living with his mom wasn't all that concerned. He was sitting there on the couch. And so, it was up to Jacob to call 911 and save his mother's life. Well, of course, her, his mother was in for many months of hospitalization and years of rehabilitation. And so, so little Jacob ended up at grandma and grandpa's out on a farm in rural Nebraska. It was the late winter, and so the days were short, and there wasn't much to do for a six-year-old out on the farm. There were a few chores, and then they would go inside and watch old people TV. And little Jacob, he was struggling. But Easter Sunday came, and Grandpa decided that it would be a good idea if they all went to church. And so they did. They made it to church for that sunrise service, and it was awesome. There was singing, and there were bells being played, and there was an Easter egg hunt. And they got back in the truck to go home, and Grandpa was just filled with Easter joy. Little Jacob and Dee, not so much. Now, Grandpa, he was a kind and an incredibly gentle-souled person, but he wasn't the most observant guy in the world. But even he realized that there was something wrong. And so he turned to little Jacob and he said, Well, what did you think of Easter Sunday? Well, little Jacob wasn't ready for such a question, and so he blurted out what was on his mind and what was on Dee's mind as well. If Jesus loves us so much that he died and rose from the grave, why does he hate my mom and me so much? And Dee looked at that wonderful, beautiful little boy, and her heart melted and she began to tell him all of the things that people had been telling her for years about how Jesus loves him and about how it is that even though his mom made bad choices and would suffer the consequences for them, that, that God loved him too. And there in that moment, she decided that it was her calling, her job, to make God's love real for that little boy. And as she said the words that had been spoken to her so many times, they became real for her, her as well. And finally, for once in her life, she had peace with God. Now, someone out there is saying to themselves, oh, pastor, that's a great story, but... What in the world does that have to do with the Trinity? Well, there's two answers. The short answer is the text mentions Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so we're calling it a Trinity text. The longer answer is, is that it is this among so many other things that reveals the nature of God. The nature of that God that is 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to us. For indeed, our God does care about righteousness and justice. God does care that we become the people that we are called to be. But God, God sent his son to make that possible, not by judging or condemning us, but by loving us, by forgiving us, by calling us righteous, by justifying us through his grace and giving us peace with God. It is this God, this God that we call Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that is even now bringing us reconciliation, who is is declaring an end to the conflict that is indeed giving us peace with God's self, with all of God's self, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are justified by grace so that we, so that you can be at peace with God. Amen. Thank you.